How do you improve on one of the best-selling game consoles of all time? With an OLED screen, of course. I have a feeling there's a lot more than that to this update though. Today we're going to be tearing down the Nintendo Switch OLED model next to the Nintendo Switch 2019 model walking you through all the changes that we find. Apart from the new screen, which we'll get to later, there are a few other changes to the outside of the OLED model. The whole thing is 3mm wider, the speaker slits have been redesigned, the kickstand is finally actually usable, and my favorite change, the Joy-Con rails on the Switch have been redesigned so the Joy-Cons wobble less when they're attached. Any Joy-Con will still fit, but the difference in fit is dramatic. Let's set these Joy-Cons aside for later and get inside the switches. The new switches screws are in slightly different places, but the story is the same. A mixture of Y000 and GIS000 screws, all need to come out to remove the back panel. I'll loosen up the 2019 switch real quick, and we're inside. To no one's surprise, metal shields guard the way. Three changes I see here though. First, the fancy new hinges of the kickstand take up quite a bit of space. You can see there are nice slots for them here, and I'm guessing Nintendo had to make some major adjustments under this shield to make this happen. Next, this antenna hardware is repositioned with the cables routed on top of the shield. These are going to be a little annoying to reroute during reassembly, but the new antenna placement might mean that wireless performance is a little better. Finally, the SD card reader hardware is a little different. It looks like this board extends under the shield here. Before I can remove the OLED switch shield, I have to deal with those antenna cables. The larger of the two antennas has two screws holding it down, and I'm going to try to disturb this tape as little as possible so we can reuse it. Oh, and watch out for that second cable. It's bent perfectly to disappear under the shield after you disconnect it. With the cables out of the way, both shields are held down with six JIS screws, and underneath is our first good look at these internals. But before we feast, let me get rid of this antenna straggler up here real quick. Alright, let's see. Right off the bat, I'm seeing this new dark circuit board. It looks like the SD card reader and the game card reader bundled together. They had to build around the slot for the kickstand hinge here, and then on the other side, the extra width makes room for the other hinge beside the battery. Besides that, the speakers are now enclosed, and one of them lives under that new board. Finally, the cooling hardware looks slightly different. The OLED model has a more slender copper heat pipe and a slightly smaller fan. One screw hidden under a sticker holds down that new card reader board, then a few more for the new fan and heatsink. Back to the old switch, it's the same story in reverse with a little more modularity. The heatsink comes off, then I can fish out the card reader headphone jack combo and pop off the 32GB storage module. It's a bummer to see the SD and game card reader parts combined and an extra bummer to see the modular storage drive gone in the OLED switch. We always secretly hoped that Nintendo would offer storage upgrades with this modular storage drive, but surprise, they never did. As for the new fan and heatsink, my guess is that this hardware reused from the original Switch was overkill for the more efficient chip that the 2019 had, but it didn't make sense to redesign anything at that point. So with the new model, Nintendo took the opportunity to shrink this down and save a little space. That or they found a way to get the same thermal performance with a smaller, more efficient fan. Our next differences are on the main circuit boards. After removing the cables and the screws holding them down, you can see the OLED model's board is slightly redesigned. A lot of the changes are placement of the tiny chips and connectors on the board, but hey, the USB-C port gets a little reinforcement. Over on the back side is the new 64GB eMMC storage chip from Samsung. This is the same spec as the original Switch's storage chip, so don't expect any performance increase here. Just a little extra space for an extra few games. In a very fun Ask the Developer Q&A on Nintendo's website, we get a sneak peek behind the curtains of this new speaker design. The engineers describe how they initially tried using similar speakers to the old ones, which emit sound to the front and back with their open design, but found they were much quieter in the OLED Switch's new layout. To combat this, they closed off the back of the speaker with these little plastic brackets, which are adhered in place. This enclosed design required a new kind of speaker, which you can see here. In the midst of all this newness, one thing remains the same, and that's the 16 watt hour lithium ion battery cell glued down here in its own chamber. I'm just going to leave it there. To remove the 2019 Switch's screen, all you need is a little heat. This one has already been removed, so I don't even need that. Just a pick to do a little slicing and prying. The back of the LCD panel is shiny like a mirror, and you can easily separate the panel from the plastic to replace one or the other individually. The new OLED screen is probably going to be a lot less forgiving. It's got glass, not plastic, in front of the display, and that glass is fused to an OLED panel underneath it, so slicing is basically off the table. You're very likely to damage the display or break the glass that way. Instead, I'll leave this on a heat pad for a few minutes and try some steady suction. To my great surprise, it actually worked. Like the old Switch, the display is only adhered around the bezel. 
Now you can see there's quite a difference between the two frames behind the display. You can also see that this OLED panel was made by Samsung. I'm relieved that this OLED screen is still easy to remove because it's definitely going to break easier than plastic. Speaking of breaking, if you spring for an OLED switch, you might notice it comes with what looks like a pre-installed screen protector. This is actually an anti-shattering film that prevents glass shards from escaping should the glass shatter, so you shouldn't remove it. Before we wrap up, here's a Joy-Con lightning round. These new white Joy-Cons are identical to every Joy-Con before them, but just last week, Nintendo came out to say that they have been making subtle improvements to increase the joystick durability, so I'd like to see if we can spot any differences inside the joystick. Last year in our investigation of the PS5 joystick drift debacle, we learned that all joysticks are consumables, something Nintendo themselves have come forward to admit. All popular joysticks currently being used by big manufacturers rely on tiny physical components moving against each other, which inevitably causes wear and leads to drift. Opening up this new joystick, I'm disappointed to say that I don't see any noticeable differences between this one and previous joysticks that I've opened up. That doesn't mean that these aren't slightly more durable though. If Nintendo says they're making changes, I tend to believe them. And they still seem to be offering free replacements for drifting Joy-Cons if you don't mind shipping yours off. If you don't want to wait, it's an easy DIY replacement procedure, and you can find everything you need, including a guide, over at ifixit.com. So the Nintendo Switch OLED model has undergone some pretty significant changes, though a lot of them don't make a big difference to performance or gameplay. While this minor update may not be the Switch Pro some people were hoping for, we are glad to see Nintendo reusing existing parts where they can and prioritizing backwards compatibility with existing hardware like docks and Joy-Cons. On the repairability scale, the new Switch OLED fares well. It earns a 7 out of 10 for its sensible modular construction and general use of screws over adhesive. Unfortunately, it's losing a point this year for the move to non-modular storage and card reader consolidation. And important to note, unlike most other modern consoles and iPhones, Nintendo doesn't use software locks to limit repairs. 